What's going on everyone? It's Sakudo. Uh This is going to be a different kind of video for sure. I wanted to record Outlast, however my computer was not able to really handle Outlast, Discord, and my OBS at the same time. Though I still really wanted to make a video about it. So I decided the best way to go about that was a video documentary. Uh, first and foremost, all of the footage is credited to Project Detonado. Thank you so much to him for letting me use his clips instead of just trying to make a purely audio recorded documentary. Uh, second, I don't know how you guys will react to this kind of video. It's not as goofy as my typical gaming videos are. Hopefully it does well with you guys, but aside from that, let's just get into it. Arguably one of the scariest horror games to date, Outlast is one of the few horror games that innovated the genre as a whole. You can make the argument that you will crap your pants playing this game, as I can make a similar argument. Though what makes this decade old game so incredibly scary to most individuals? Current horror games have better graphics, better scares, and better overall plots. Well, there are a couple key factors within this game that make it so unsettling. For example, it is innate human nature to, when threatened, choose between fight or flight. Pretty self-explanatory. Well, when you take that choice away, it unsettles the human brain greatly, as humans are a species that are most comfortable when given choices in times of uncertainty. That way, we can choose the most ideal resort to handle any given situation, especially threatening situations. In Outlast, you only have one choice, to run. Even when it isn't ideal to run, and to rather confront the threat head on, that isn't a choice. What further escalates this lack of choice is the environment we must face these dilemmas in. Outlast takes place in almost complete darkness the only source of guidance being the night vision camera we are given at the beginning of the game. Though most humans say that they aren't scared of the dark, the majority however are scared of the uncertainty of darkness and what lies within it. Speaking of what lies within the dark, the deformed and wretched creatures of Outlast, which vaguely resemble humans, are another thing that unsettles most people who play this game. When humans do not completely understand or familiarize a foreign object or creature, it makes the idea of the earlier mentioned concept of uncertain threats and dangers much more terrifying. The reason I mention familiarization is because there is such a wide variety of dangers within Outlast. With such a wide variety of threats, it is difficult to become accustomed to what you'll be faced with while playing through Outlast. From the beginning of the game, you are filled with uncertainty, anywhere from the foreign environment to the innate dangers within said environment. With uncertainty, the comfort of expectation falters. Therefore, any creatures or threats we face within Outlast become that much more scary, as we cannot develop strategies against those threats, due to the lack of repetition or pattern within the creatures throughout the game. The only two exceptions are Chris Walker and the Wall Rider, which make several appearances throughout the game, hunting the player. Lastly, the idea of being chased and hunted down is quite a scary situation for most players, as it isn't an everyday difficulty in the physical world to be hunted down by a disgustingly wretched creature such as those within this game. Humans are quite accustomed to being apex predators, and when that title goes out the window and we become the prey, it is difficult to adapt and survive as we've never been faced with such a dilemma up until this point. Now let's get into the actual specifics of this game's plot to give some better context for my argument. The game begins with Miles Upshur our main protagonist and freelance journalist, receiving an anonymous tip-off about Mount Massive Asylum, a psychiatric hospital owned and operated by the Murkoff Corporation. This anonymous tip-off is later revealed to be Wayland Park, the main protagonist of the sequel DLC, Outlast Whistleblower. Upon getting into the asylum, or better yet, breaking into the asylum, 
Miles discovers the bodies of the hospital security guards massacred throughout the hallways. On top of the mutilated security guards, the asylum patients now run rampant throughout the building. These patients are later referred to as variants. Miles begins traversing throughout the upper dormitories when he encounters an impaled security officer who advises the journalist to escape the asylum immediately. As the player takes this advice and tries to leave, we encounter Chris Walker, one of the biggest and most powerful variants within the asylum. The player is immediately lifted from the ground and thrown from the second story into the asylum lobby and knocked unconscious. Upon awakening, Miles is met with the so-called Father Martin, a patient who believes he is a priest. Father Martin says Miles was destined by God to witness his cult of patients, therefore refusing to let the player leave the asylum. Martin leaves as Miles passes out again. Miles awakens, and the player is now tasked with finding a way out of the asylum, whilst avoiding the numerous variants littered throughout the building. As the player attempts to unlock the main doors from the security control room, Father Martin ambushes Miles and sedates him with a suspiciously rusty needle. Once again, Father Martin says to Miles that he must stay and witness the cult's events. Martin shows the player security footage of the asylum security guards being massacred by a mysterious, apparently supernatural entity known as the Wall Rider, afterwards transporting a now unconscious Upshur to the asylum's holding cells. Awakening once again, Miles works his way upwards through the sewers to escape the cell block after encountering a pair of inmates known as the Twins who express a desire to kill and eat the player. However, Father Martin requests that the twins abstain from attacking the journalist. Upshur makes his way through the sewers, avoiding attacks from inmates, to reach the asylum showers. While making his way through the showers, Miles is attacked by Chris Walker once again, the only escape being through the asylum vents. After exiting the vents, the player makes their way through the asylum. They are then chased into a corner by several inmates, as Miles hears a voice from a dumbwaiter. The voice tells Miles to take the dumbwaiter as an escape. Instead of refuge, the player is captured by a psychotic inmate appearing to be a doctor. This doctor, Richard Traeger, harvests body parts from his fellow patients, the player being his next harvest. Traeger imprisons Upshur strapping him to a wheelchair to slice off two of his fingers with a pair of shears. As Traeger leaves the room, the player struggles to escape the wheelchair straps. Finally escaping, Upshur is pursued by Traeger. The player seeks refuge in an asylum elevator. Traeger attempts to follow, only to be caught between the moving elevator and the floor the player just escaped, ultimately crushing Richard's midsection, killing him. Miles encounters Martin once again as the player exits onto the asylum grounds, only to be chased back inside by Chris Walker. The player is forced to circumnavigate the ruined stairway and numerous asylum floors to follow the trail of blood Father Martin left for Miles. The player finally locates Martin in the asylum's chapel to witness his death, that being self-immolation on a crucifix, supposedly being a self-sacrifice and offering to the Wall Rider. After witnessing such a horrible death to Martin, Miles takes the now repaired primary elevator down to hopefully exit the asylum once and for all. However, Upshur is tricked by Martin once more, who instead sends the elevator to an underground military facility beneath the asylum. While attempting to exit the underground facility, the player is chased by the wall rider, only to find Chris Walker, who incapacitates the player. The player is almost killed by Walker, as the wall rider attacks and brutally kills the inmate, leaving shortly after, seemingly uninterested in the journalist anymore. Upshur continues through the facility, meeting Dr. Wernick, who was originally believed to be dead, he is the scientist in charge of the entire experiment known as Project Wallrider. 
Wernick explains that the Wall Rider is not actually some supernatural ghost, and instead the result of nanotechnology experiments conducted on an inmate by the name of William Hope, the Wall Rider entity being controlled directly by William. Wernick orders Miles to find William in the laboratory and kill him by shutting off his numerous life support systems, ultimately killing the Wall Rider. After succeeding in his task, Miles is caught by the Wall Rider, who attacks and possesses him. Seemingly okay, the player limps towards the exit. Nearing the exit, Upshur is confronted by Wernick and several armed guards, who shoot down the journalist. Upshur collapses as the screen fades black. This is when Wernick realizes we are now the new host of the Wall Rider. The panicked voices of the armed guards echo throughout the hallways, followed by sounds of gunfire and brutal tearing of flesh. And then the credits roll. Honestly, a spectacular story. To get a better understanding of how and why the Asylum has gotten to this level of anarchy, let's explore some of these characters along with the sociological and psychological aspects behind them. Firstly, I'd like to address Chris L. Walker and his obsession with slaughtering Miles Upshur. From my research and speculation, I don't believe Walker is focused solely on killing Miles, but rather on killing anyone who isn't a variant to prevent the Wall Rider from transferring between hosts. We see this example proven several times throughout the game, as we see Walker kill multiple non-variants, such as in the prison block when Walker kills the guard. Chris Walker, in a sociological aspect, is one amongst a few unofficial tyrants who reign over the other variants. Other similarly empowered variants include Richard Tragen and Father Martin. Chris Walker is one of these empowered rulers due to his overwhelming strength and speed. So overwhelming that no other variants rival Walker in raw ability. Richard Traeger is also a prominent antagonist within Outlast. Now, Walker and the twins could have easily killed Traeger in an instant, so what made him such a powerful figure within the Asylum? Well, he is seemingly the variant most in tap with his humanity, the most cognitively sound per se. He is quite aware of his past life as a doctor, to such an extent that he still practices his study on his fellow inmates. The Murkoff Corporation attempted to make Traeger a viable host for the Wall Rider, yet failed to such an extent that they could not even erase nor alter Traeger's memory to make him a viable candidate. Richard was able to escape Murkoff's experiments during the Wall Rider's massacre, and seek refuge in the Asylum Hospital Ward, where he began harvesting his fellow inmates' limbs. During the initial outbreak, Richard locked off the majority of the hospital wing to himself. That being said, the majority of inmates were still terrified of meeting Traeger, and overall wanted to avoid him. The reason Traeger was such a powerful figure, though, was due to his pure intimidation and wit. Many did not want to confront him because they knew Traeger would be able to outsmart them and ultimately murder them. The last person I would like to mention is Father Martin. An unofficial detragonist to the player, Martin regularly makes us question whose side he's on. For one, he hinders the player's attempts to escape the asylum, but on the other hand, Martin keeps Upshur safe from most of the variants. Martin even apologizes for sedating the player at the beginning of the game. This, however, does not excuse Martin's cultish psychopathy. Martin's devotion to both suicidal and murderous rituals highlights his lack of grasp on reality. Next, I'd like to touch on Martin's interesting sociological role. Martin's cult isn't explored too much throughout the game, but it seems this so-called priest is an incredibly persuasive inmate. He can effectively persuade and order his fellow patients to abstain from attacking the player in several situations, even persuading some of the most bloodthirsty patients like the twins. The reason Martin is so persuasive to his fellow inmates is due to the inmates' lack of individual knowledge and decision. Martin is able to convince the patients that the Wall Rider is the second coming of a Christ-like being, and Miles is a prophet delivered by God. The patients do not have the proper judgment to even question Martin, therefore they don't, instead following every order of the priest. Lastly, I'd like to make a short comparison between the two most threatening forces in Outlast, 
Walker, and Martin, along with their ideologies towards Miles and the Wall Rider. Chris Walker is an ex-military policeman driven crazy by his multiple Afghan tours and admitted to Mount Massive Asylum as a result. He believes the Wall Rider is a sickness and his only solution to stop the sickness from spreading is to kill any potential hosts, including Miles. In contrast, Martin believes the Wall Rider is a godlike being, Miles being the messiah of this entity. Due to this, Martin attempts to protect Miles at whatever cost. The only reasonable comparison between these two ideologies is that they're both quite wrong, reasonably so as both men are clinically insane. In closing, with such complex science of sociology and psychology throughout Outlast, it may be difficult to properly identify why this game can be so unsettling to most people, aside from the generic phobias mentioned at the beginning of the video. If we refer to the earlier arguments and examples, Outlast presents the players with very realistic anarchic dilemmas, minus the murderous variants. The game presents very reasonable factions that humans may adopt in such environments as the Mount Massive Asylum. For example, we have Martin's cult, who resorts to religious answers in times of chaos. On the contrary, we have those who take advantage of anarchy to fulfill their darkest desires, like the twins' bloodthirst and cannibalistic nature. On top of the chaos throughout the asylum, the shady operations of the Murkoff Corporation are very plausible things that can happen within most modern governments, in specific, human experimenting and alteration. To wrap up, games that are more realistic than fantastic, especially in the horror genre, tend to unsettle players much more due to the very real possibilities of such horrible situations, and Outlast is simply one of the few games that do it best. Thank you.